talking about about a record. What's Bosco about? Bosco is about a relationship that is torn apart by addiction. It's uh, a search for redemption and an apology. What's the scariest addiction in your opinion? The scariest in in terms of in terms of everyday life you can you can step into like an addiction you can you can easily step into. I think the scariest addiction on this planet is to alcohol because alcohol is a very addictive drug and it ruins families and it ruins relationships. Um and uh it is socially acceptable and it is easy to find. Um controlled substances, other drugs are more difficult to get and it's a crime to to um to buy them, but uh alcohol is everywhere. And if it's you are unfortunate enough to become addicted to it, it can be disastrous. And there is still a stigma attached to alcohol addiction or, in, or addiction in general. It is perceived as an addict is perceived as being somebody of weak moral fiber. But the fact of the matter is that the World Health Organization has classified addiction as a disease. And there are statistics on this. In on the planet, on average, one person out of 10 is addicted to something, whether it's alcohol, um illegal drugs, sugar, sex, pornography, the list goes on and on and on and on. It's a very real problem in our society, and I don't believe that until we take this stigma away from it that people can really get the help that they need because it's a disease like like any other disease. If somebody gets cancer, nobody goes, "Hey, it's your fault, man." <laughs> you know? And it's exactly the same thing with addiction. And I think we have a a comedian and an actor in the UK called Russell Brand. He's quite famous and he is campaigning for abstinence-based programs to be funded by the government a lot more and campaigning for the stigma to be taken away. Um and uh I have a great deal of respect for him for that matter and he's very 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 funny. Which is the song in the record you feel closer to and the song that best represent you right now in your career? Bosco and also in your career in your whole career. Uh well, for me Bosco is a career defining moment. Okay. It, it um it sounds the least like placebo. Okay. It is a piano song with strings. There's hardly any guitar on it, you know. It's very minimalist. It's very long. And I think it's the one song that can transcend our identity and exist in its own context without the necessary context of the band. to give it meaning. So, every band tries to write that one classic song, you know, and if you're lucky, you get to do it once in your career. Fleetwood Mac, I think I've done it many times, you know, but hey, they're geniuses. Um and we may have got close to that classic song with Bosco. It may not be super classic because it's 7 minutes long, but that felt like the right amount of time to tell the story that needed to be told what about looking at yourself like 20 years ago when when you see something that happened maybe 20 years ago when you were starting uh the uh, the placebo project uh what's the first thing that come into your mind disbelief i d- i thought this can't be happening you know um I thought, wow, you know, we're really pulling the wool over everybody's eyes, you know, somebody's going to find out sooner or later, you know, that uh that this isn't real and it's not and it's and it's not going to continue. So let's just enjoy it as much as we can right now, you know. Um we didn't think that we would be as successful as we were on our first album. Um uh, it wasn't what it wasn't our motivation. our motivation was not to get a real job 
not to have to work in an office. That was our motivation. Um, and we would have been happy to just be able to pay the rent and buy food by making music. Um, but we became very successful very early on in our careers. And at that point, I thought, wow, I don't think this is going to last. So let's just go for it, man. You know, <laughs> and go for it. We did. <laughs> Not 20 years. Yes, yes. I'm, it's a very privileged position to be in, and I'm very grateful. It's fantastic to be able to, after 20 years, to still write music that people want to hear and want to listen to and that people can connect with. In which ways do you think you've become a better man? Wow. <laughs> If so. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody hopes that one, that one becomes a better man, you know? Um, I'm not as naive as I was, um, which is probably a good thing. And um, my capacity to, to have empathy with others has, uh, has improved. So, and that, that's a, it's a great thing to have as a songwriter. You know, I think, you know, some people, a lot of people will probably disagree, but I think I'm getting better as a songwriter. So, um, So perhaps that answers your enormous question. <laughs> Brian, thank you so much for the time you gave us. Uh, Loud Like Love is out. Uh, you're going to come in Bologna November 23rd. We wait for you. Thank you for your time. It's thank always you. a pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you. It's been great. Thank you very much. Thanks again.